I'm Stefan Helmreich. I'm the convener of the uh, Invisible <laughs> panel, along with my co-convener, Rebecca Uchill. And the title of this panel might as well be, or also be, uh, Seeing Material. How do we see material things, whoever we are? Uh, how do we see material things when uh, technologies of cloaking and of machine vision change the material capacities and possibilities of seeing, of who and what can see what, when? What does it mean to be visible or invisible? Visible and invisible. So think, too, of the material networks of monitoring, surveillance, and data capture that help or hinder governmental or citizen seeing or undocumented seeing in our digitally mediated days. Think of this, too. Material things bear the traces of their conditions of production and circulation. And such traces may be made visible or invisible as carbon footprints or offsets, as reclaimed landscapes or as brownfields, as renewable energy or toxic waste. And this panel, Invisible, is about all of this. We will be seeing and hearing from uh, George Barbastasis, professor of mechanical engineering at MIT. Uh, George is known for creating an optical invisibility cloak, a calcite crystal system that may make it possible to hide objects in plain sight. We'll be hearing from Trevor Poglin, an artist and geographer who explores and documents invisible infrastructures, ranging from secret corporate and government sites to orbital, atmospheric, landed, and underwater networks known through technologies of non-human machine vision. Trevor's presentation will take the form of a conversation with Lisa Parks. Lisa Parks is a professor of comparative media studies here at MIT. Parks writes on television, satellites, drones, and infrastructures of surveillance. The Poglin Parks conversation will then be followed by a presentation by Michelle Murphy, Professor of History and Women and Gender Studies at the University of Toronto. Murphy is a historian of science who studies often invisible ecological infrastructures, tracking, for example, the way environmental toxins are made visible or invisible. And her latest work has been dedicated to rescuing scientific data about climate change as we risk losing it under climate change denying governance. And the last of our panelists, but also the first, since, since she is our moderator, is Sandy Alexander. Uh, Alexander writes on black American material culture, particularly literature and photographs, and she examines how histories of black displacement, invisibility, and vulnerability haunt and energize the way that black lives matter now. So I'm going to hand the conversation over to Sandy, who will provide framing thoughts to launch the dis discussion of being and seeing material in the age of cloaking, machine vision, surveillance, data erasure, and new techniques of making visible and invisible. Sandy.